Welcome, everyone. We're glad you could join us today for a paleontology program. Today, we're partnering with KU Natural History Museum in Lawrence. The museum was going to come down to Pittsburgh for a program, but that didn't work out. So they found another way to join us. We're going to do it online. Stay tuned afterwards where we'll have our own dinosaur story. Okay, take it away, Eleanor. Hi there, I'm Eleanor Gardner. I'm the Outreach Coordinator at the University of Kansas, KU, Natural History Museum in Lawrence, and I'm also a paleontologist. Hello, my name is Colleen McGilvery, and I am the Museum Education Coordinator. Today, we're really excited to talk to you about the paleontology of Kansas. First, Colleen is going to introduce us to the two broad types of fossils, and then I'll go into detail about fossils found in our state, and especially those that you can find in the Pittsburgh area. You might have joined me for storybook science. And if you join me for storybook science, then you've learned about really big fossils, like the titanosaur, the world's largest dinosaur. And you've also learned about really small fossils, like when we read The Dinosaur Expert. Fossils are the remains of living organisms that lived in a past geological age. So they lived a very, very long time ago. And fossils can be from any organism that lived in a past geological age, from tiny microbes, to very, very big dinosaurs, to plants. The remains of these organisms, they have to go through a special process in order to become a fossil, so they become hardened. Now, these fossils, they look like rocks and they're hard, so they kind of feel like rocks too, but they're not rocks, they're fossils. And fossils, no matter if they're from a tiny microbe or a very big dinosaur can be categorized into one of two categories, body fossil or trace fossil. Body fossils are fossils that come from the body. So anything that's directly from the body can become a body fossil. That includes bones, teeth, claws, all of those parts of the body can become body fossils. Now I have a couple of body fossils that I want to show you, and the first is a cast of a Tyrannosaurus rex toe bone. Now when I say cast, what I mean is that it's a copy or a replica of the real fossil. And as you can see, this Tyrannosaurus rex toe bone is quite large. And that would make sense because the Tyrannosaurus rex was among the largest carnosaurs behind Giganotosaurus and Spinosaurus. That means it was one of the largest meat-eating dinosaurs that walked on two legs. The other category of fossils is trace fossils. Now trace fossils aren't directly from the body. What this means is that an organism could make a trace fossil using its body or using a specific body part, or it could have made it in its body and then expelled it but it's not a direct part of its body. Trace fossils, they can show us activity of an organism and they can help us better understand its environment. But again, it's not a direct part of its body. A really great example of trace fossils is a footprint. Now, this is a footprint of a theropod and I know that because it has one two, three toes. Do you see that? Can you count the toes? Now, this footprint, it was made using a foot. So an organism used its foot in order to make the footprint, but the footprint is not a direct part of its body. So that's why we know it's a trace fossil. Eleanor is going to teach you more about Kansas fossils. A lot of people automatically think of dinosaurs when they think about fossils. And sometimes folks are surprised to learn that the rock layers of Kansas really don't preserve very many dinosaur bones. 
Just eight or so dinosaur specimens have ever been found in our state, and only one of the dinosaur species is known to have actually lived in what is now the state of Kansas. Meet Silvasaurus chondrei. The name Silvasaurus comes from the language Latin, in which Silvasaurus means forest lizard. The second part of its name, chondrei, is the species name, and it honors Warren Condre and his 10-year-old son who originally found the bones in 1955. They found the skull, which I have a replica of here, the lower jaw, teeth, ribs, shoulder spikes, vertebrae from the backbone, a leg, part of the pelvis, as well as other bones. Silvasaurus was a notosaurid ankylosaur which means that it was an armored dinosaur. You can tell because it had embedded into its skin all along the body, neck, and tail hard rounded plates with pointed studs sticking out. And at the shoulder, it had sharp spikes that were sticking out. This dinosaur lived about 110 million years ago during the middle of the Cretaceous period in a densely forested area along the tidal shoreline of the Western Interior Seaway. If we take a look at this replica of Silvasaurus's skull and we focus in on the teeth, you see the teeth right in here? They were kind of triangular in shape, almost like leaf shaped. And they used these uniquely shaped teeth to pluck leaves from branches and to slice up plant matter. Therefore, Silvasaurus was an herbivore that ate plants. So moving away from dinosaurs now, you may have heard that Kansas has two official state fossils, Tylosaurus, one of the largest known kinds of Mosasaur, and Pteranodon, a flying reptile. Neither of these extinct animals were dinosaurs. Rather, they were the evolutionary cousins of their famous land-dwelling relatives, the dinosaurs. Animals like Tylosaurus and Pteranodon lived in and around the Western Interior Seaway, which was an inland sea that covered much of Kansas during the Cretaceous period. And it also covered a vast portion of the middle of North America. And so here is a replica of a Mosasaurus skull that was found in Kansas. And this is a real fossil vertebra from a Mosasaur. There were also many species of bony fish living in the Western Interior Seaway, like the ferocious Zyphactinus audax. And this is a replica of its skull. Just check out those gnarly teeth. There were also ancient swimming birds like Hesperornis. All of these extinct animals were preserved in western Kansas in a type of limestone called chalk. This chalk is where KU gets its chant, Rock Chalk Jayhawk. Now, in the Pittsburgh area of southeastern Kansas, the rock layers date back to the late Carboniferous, sometimes called the Pennsylvanian period, which is about 320 million years ago. At that time, the mid-continent of the United States would have been sitting near the equator. The rock layers in Pittsburgh and in Crawford County in general contain a lot of coal beds, as well as black to gray shale. And I have a couple examples here. So you can see here's um, some black shale that has um, plant fossils preserved in it. And then this is an example of that kind of grayer shale. You also have siltstones, thin limestone layers, and some sandstone in this area. During the Carboniferous, this area would have been a swampy region with an ocean level that was periodically rising and falling. So there would have been periods of time when land plants and animals could have thrived. And then there also would have been times when the ocean level would have risen and then marine organisms would have thrived. Therefore, the fossils you can find in southeastern Kansas consist of plant fossils, trace fossils like burrows, fish scales, and invertebrate marine organisms such as broken pieces of bryozoans. I have a couple of examples here. 
so you can see that with this sample you've got the fenestrate bryozoans that means that it's got like little windows and then here we have the branching tree-like bryozoans you can also have broken pieces of crinoids um, many people find crinoids in the limestone of eastern Kansas. Um, they kind of look like they might have been plants or like they had like a stem-like structure. Um, they were actually animals that lived at the um, bottom of the ocean floor. Many of the sedimentary rocks of southeastern Kansas show extensive bioturbation. And what that is, is the reworking of soils and sediments as animals like shrimp and worms move through it. And so I have some examples of burrows here. You can see these little sections. That's where you have evidence of bioturbation. Well, today we've discussed over 235 million years worth of Kansas paleontology. I would encourage you with your family to explore the paleontology around you and see what kind of fossils you can find. Or you can go on an adventure back in time through a book at your local library. You can also learn more from our Museum from Home webpage where we have lots of info and hands-on activities about fossils, rocks, and many other science topics. Goodbye! Wow! That was fun! Yes, it was! Thank you, Eleanor and Colleen. Now we're going to have our own story. Okay. Dinosaur Bones by Bob Barner Dinosaurs are gone for good! The last dinosaurs lived 65 million years ago. Dinosaurs became extinct because climate change made it hard for them to find enough food. Maybe dinosaurs once lived in your neighborhood. The first dinosaur bones were discovered in England in the 1820s. Since then, dinosaur fossils have been found all over the world. Fossils are bones and footprints that have been preserved in the Earth's crust. Dinosaurs had teeth to bite and jaws to chew. The shape of the jaws and teeth help scientists find out if a dinosaur was a meat or plant eater. Dinosaurs with sharp teeth like this, T. rex, were meat eaters. They walked the earth when those bones were new. Tyrannosaurus rex means king of tyrant lizards. Its arms were so short it couldn't even scratch its chin. The first T. rex skeleton was found in Montana in 1902. A T. rex skull can weigh up to 750 pounds. They had bones for legs and bones for hips. Scientists study the bones to find out more about dinosaurs. Some dinosaurs had hips like birds. Others had hips like lizards. Many dinosaurs were giants, but some were the size of a chicken. Dinosaur bones used on long dinosaur trips. Some dinosaurs traveled and hunted in groups or herds. Living in groups helped protect them from predators. Ancient footprints show that baby dinosaurs were often protected from predators by walking in the center of the herd. They had bones with discs and bones with points. Stegosaurus had pointed bones on its back. Its small head held a brain the size of a walnut. And bones for running with sockets and joints. Stegosaurus spent most of the time munching plants to feed its huge body. It used the spikes on its tail to fight attacks from meat-eating dinosaurs like T. rex. Today, only bones are left to show. Triceratops had a skull one-third the length of its body. It gathered plants with its turtle-like beak and chewed food with teeth in the back of its mouth. But dinosaurs rumbled and creaked long, long ago. Triceratops means three-horned face. This plant-eater was generally peaceful. 
However, it used its long horns to fight when attacked. Triceratops was one of the last dinosaurs to exist. So when you see dinosaur bones at the museum in town... Scientists put together dinosaur bones like a puzzle. They used chisels, diamond saws, and dental drills to remove the bones from rock. The skeletons are held together with metal wire and pipes. Remember, a dinosaur once used them to get around. Brachiosaurus weighed more than ten elephants. It was one of the heaviest and longest dinosaurs. A hungry Brachiosaurus used its long neck to reach tender leaves at the top of the trees. Well, that was fun. Thanks for joining us today for this program. Be sure and check out the KU Museum at Home website that will give you all kinds of activities that you can do at home. And check out the library's website and request books of your own. Thanks, everybody. Bye.